breaking news. It's windy, but what exactly is wind? Over to you, Alyssa. Thanks, Sarah. It's not as windy over here. I hope you guys are holding on to your hats. I guess the wind is blowing pretty strong, which means that the wind can blow slow or it can blow fast. And usually we measure wind in miles per hour. So when there's a strong storm, sometimes we have winds that can be over 100 miles per hour. Or on a day like today, maybe it's only a light breeze, which maybe only be one or two miles per hour in wind. Now, if wind can move at many speeds, it can also move in many directions. But what causes our wind to move? Hang on one second. This is one of the things that causes our wind to move. And that is our sun. Our sun is actually heating up our earth and thus it's actually heating the air. Now, if it's heating the air, it's creating pressure and there's pressure all over the earth. Hang on one second. With pressure, our hot air rises. Wind moves from high pressure to low pressure. And our earth doesn't just sit still. So our earth spins and that is causing our wind to move. And that's something known as the Coriolis effect. We can do a quick experiment to show how the movement of the earth affects how our wind can flow. So when looking in this container, after it's done spinning, you can see the movement of the outer rings and the inner rings are different. There are a variety of tools that help us better understand wind direction, like this wind sock, and soon we'll learn a bit about wind speed. How to make a wind sock. So first we're just gonna be cutting a ring out of a regular plastic bottle. Uh, so cut off the bottom, cut off the top. We really only need a ring a few inches. And then I'm just punching a line of holes around, along the bottom. And then I'm taking some strips of plastic grocery bags and threading them through those holes. Um, I only punched about six holes. That's really all you need. And then I'm cutting six strips of grocery bags to thread through the holes. They don't have to be pretty. They just need to be long strips. After you finish cutting the strips and threading them through, you're going to need to tie them into a knot once just to kind of secure them onto the plastic ring. Then you're just going to punch two more holes at the top and thread a piece of string through each side and tie it on each side to make your handle. And then you can take your windsock outside, hold it or hang it and then you'll be able to figure out which way the wind is blowing. Wind direction is always reported by the direction from which it originates. For example, a northerly wind blows from north to south. A wind vane is another tool that can be used to help us understand wind direction. Just as important as the direction is, the speed is as well, and we can use a tool called an anemometer to help us understand the wind speed. Here, we built our own anemometer. See if you can count how many times the blue cup passes by on the anemometer. The more times you see the blue cup pass by, that means the faster the wind is blowing. So why do we care about wind direction and wind speed? Meteorologists measure these things and use them to help predict the weather. Certain wind directions and speeds can indicate that we are going to have certain weather patterns, such as rain, tornado, or even a hurricane. Yes, wind can cause severe weather like hurricanes and tornadoes and storms. But wind also plays a huge role for our plants, dispersing seeds, and we can also collect energy from wind through turbines. So next time when you're outside, maybe playing, think about where the wind is coming from or how fast it's blowing, and enjoy the day and appreciate that all of that wind has to do with our weather every day.